If you're looking to learn more about how electricity works and how we use it in our industrial and commercial facilities, whether to light lighting circuits, run motors, operate variable frequency drives, programmable logic controllers, and all of that other equipment out there at American Train Co., you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Randy Barnett, one of several electrical instructors here at American Train Co. Before you can understand the practical applications of electricity, though, let's first go into one of our classrooms and learn how does electricity work. Electricity works just like water flowing through a piping system. Here we have a pump in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. As the pump turns, it builds up a pressure. That water pressure then forces water to flow through the valve, through a flow meter that measures the volume of water flowing in gallons per minute, and then the water returns back to the source, back to the pump where it came from. We could install some pressure gauges. We could put one pressure gauge on the discharge of the pump. We could put another pressure gauge on the inlet side of the valve and another pressure gauge on the outlet side of the valve. We could subtract one pressure gauge from the other and find the difference in pressure across the valve, or what we would call the pressure drop across the valve. We could change that pressure drop by changing the position of the valve. By opening or closing the valve, we change the pressure drop then across the valve. An electrical circuit works the same way. In an electrical circuit, we must have a source of voltage pressure. Voltage is the electromotive force that causes the electrical current to flow. The amount of current that flows, the volume, is measured in amperage or amperes. The volume of electricity is the number of electrons past one point in one second. All electrical circuits have some resistance to them or present some opposition to the current flow. We measure that resistance in ohms and use the omega symbol to represent ohms of resistance then. Remember, in the electrical circuit, however much current leaves the source must be the same amount of current that returns back to the source. Well, we can measure the values in our electrical circuits as well. We can take a voltmeter. We put one test lead on the inlet side of the incandescent lamp, if you will, and the other test lead on the outlet side. And what we're measuring is the difference in voltage as the current flows through the lamp. We're measuring the voltage drop, in other words, across that lamp. We can also measure the volume of electrical current that flows. We measure that in amperage, and we can use a clamp-on ammeter to measure amperage. So, in the electrical circuit, we must have a complete path for current flow. However much current leaves the source must be the exact same amount of current that returns back to the source. And across each resistance in the circuit, we can measure the difference in voltage or the voltage drop across that component. Now that you've seen how simple it is to understand how electricity works, the next topic is for you to understand how we apply electricity in our industrial and commercial facilities. Check out all of our many different electrical topics at www.americantrainco.com